The following is a special Wayne Hills Television sports presentation. Hello and welcome to a special edition of the Student Voice. Today we will be looking at the impressive career of Carolina Panthers tight end Greg Olson. Greg is a former Wayne Hills Patriot and today we will be discussing his journey from high school to the NFL. I am pleased to be joined alongside with head football coach Wayne Demikoff. Coach, how are you? Now, I'm well, thanks. Before we get started, give me a little bit of your background before you came to Wayne Hills. Uh, you know, did you know the Olson family at all when you first came here? Uh, I was a teacher and, and a coach at Belleville High School here in New Jersey. Um, I, I knew about Chris Olson, the coach. I mean, you know, obviously he was uh, is a legendary coach here in New Jersey. Uh, I knew about him. I didn't know that he had such talented sons until I got here. <laughs> then yeah. I quickly learned just how, how good the whole family was. Now, you were uh, Greg's defensive line coach. Yes. You spent a lot of time with him throughout his entire high school career. What was he like on and off the field as a man? Well, I mean, on the field, he was dominant. He was a dominant player, whether it was offense and, and certainly on defense, which, you know, he, you know, as good as he was on offense, he was as good, if not better, on defense. And, um, you know, he, he, him being on the field was like having a coach on the field. He knew everything everybody was, was supposed to do, including himself. And, uh, you know, he was just, he, he added when things weren't right, he knew how to fix them. And, and uh, you know, his play was just, like I said, dominant. You know, and as a, as a kid, I mean, he was always that, that you know, that, that, that kid that was doing the right thing. He talked to his teachers here. He was always the, you know, the model student. And, and just, you know, he, he was very focused on what he was doing in the classroom and on the field. Now I'm gonna bring up a couple games. Um, Fairlawn 2002. You guys went over there on a Saturday game, could not play due to the field conditions, and you happened to play the next day, and Greg, I heard, put out a huge dominant performance. Take me through that game. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we were down, and um, you know, Greg just took the game over and, and you know, let, led us to a, to a comeback and an, what, what ended up being you know, a, a substantial victory for us. But you know, he, you know, they had a problem like most teams did, trying to control him on both sides of the ball. He was just physically you know, his size, his speed, he was, just, he was just heads and tails above everybody else. Now, are there any other games, plays, or moments that really, in your mind, stick out when you think of Greg Olson? You know, uh, you know the, the, the one that re really catapulted us to the state championship was when he made that catch in overtime against Passaic Valley. We were down in that game, too, and, you know, on that play, that particular play that he scored in the end zone, I mean, he was covered. I mean, he just reached out and took the ball away from them, and... Uh, you know, that, that eventually led us to, to the state championship uh, against Rampo, which we won. Now, obviously, most people nowadays know Greg as a dominant tight end in the NFL. But you knew him as something else. He was uh, not only was he a tight end here at Wayne Hills, but he was a phenomenal defensive player. Do you think that if Greg maybe took a different route and did not go to be a tight end, he could have also made to the NFL being a defensive end? He, uh, he won defensive player of the year in the state of New Jersey uh, his senior year. He, you, I mean, as a defensive lineman, I mean, you couldn't block him. I mean, you know, guys were committing two, three guys to him. Uh, I think he could have made it as a defensive lineman in the NFL. I think, he, you know, he was one of those kids that anywhere you put him, he was, he was dominant. So, yeah, I mean, could he have done that? Absolutely. I mean, as, as disruptive as he was offensively when we threw the ball and, and his blocking and, and things like that, defensively, every snap, run, you ran at him, you couldn't, you know, you run away from him. He was going to run you down, rushing the quarterback. I mean, you know, he, he made the guys around him so much better because there was so much attention put on him. Now, during his high school run, those four years, would you say he was the leader of that team? No, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, so many times. I mean, I think when you have a, a, a player like him um, and week in and week out, you know, you go to a, you know, play a team here, play a team there, and, and you have the best player on the field, I mean, that certainly helps you you know, when you're trying to win a state championship. And as you know, that, that his senior year was the first state championship we won. Now, I'm sure this coming Sunday, obviously Super Bowl 50, you're going to be rooting for the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> yes. How cool is it going to be to see Greg Olson, someone that you coached in high school, playing on the biggest stage? Well, I mean, listen, just, just knowing him and, and, the, and the kind of man he is, I mean, you can't help but to root for him. But, I mean, as far as me coaching him, you know, <laughs> I... I I was stealing money coaching him you know, when he was in high school. He was good, and, and, and I didn't make him that way. He was that way, and, and, and you know, the, the, just being 
associated with him and being able to, to be around him those years in high school, it's just a thrill for me. I mean, he's, he, he's that type of guy that he brought out the best in, in me, brought out the best in, in our team and, and, and the players around him. So uh, I wish him the best of luck and I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna ask you one more question. Greg's gonna be sitting in the locker room coming, you know, thinking in his mind, this is the biggest game come this Sunday he's ever played in. He's played in state championships. He's played in big games in his career, in the NFL as well, playoff games. But this is the grand stage. You know, it doesn't get any bigger than the Super Bowl. If you could tell him one thing before he goes onto the field this Sunday, what would it be? You know, just, just do your thing. I mean, he's, he's done it so well for so long. Uh, you know, the, the, a, a lot of times in big moments, your big, your big guys show up, and, and when the lights come on, they're at their best, and I have no doubt that he'll, he'll be at his best again this week, and uh, just, go, you know, good luck. I mean, yeah. he, he'll, he'll, he's going to be him, and that's, that, that'll be good enough. Definitely. Thank you so much for being on set. Well, that wraps up our first segment of this special edition of The Student Voice. When we come back from break, I'll be talking to Mike Rudner and Dan Schillier, former Wayne Hills alumni. Don't go anywhere. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Tri-County Irrigation. From service to installation, we will take care of all your irrigation needs. Remember, a green lawn is a healthy lawn. For more information, you can call 973-696-0121. Hello and welcome back to this special edition of the Student Voice. I am pleased to be joined alongside former Wayne Hills football announcer Mike Rudner and former Wayne Hills football star Dan Shaliri. Guys, let's get started. All right, thanks for having us. Thank you. Now, Mike, sitting down watching clips of Greg from 13 years ago, uh, this must bring back some memories, you know, seeing him play on the field outside, and now he's playing in the Super Bowl. Do you think coming this Sunday when you're watching the big game, you'll kind of, you know, remember the times when you uh, were announcing his games down at the field? Yeah, well, uh, luckily enough for myself and then for Dan, who played alongside him, uh, we got to call Greg's first big moments uh, as a football player and, you know, his state championship, which I'm sure he'll always remember. And now he's going for the big championship, the NFL championship, that, that even guys like Dan Marino and, and legends that, that played in the NFL for, for a number of years, Barry Sanders never were able to accomplish. So it'll be a lot of fun watching Greg see, see, try, to, see, to see him try to go for a ring. Now, Dan, you played alongside Greg. Did you ever think in your entire football career here at Wayne Hills you'd be long, lining up alongside a Super Bowl-bound tight end? Well, from the very beginning, uh, you know, freshman year and everything like that, you knew there was something special about him. He was l larger than life in everything he did. He towered over everybody. Um, you know, and as that progressed, be playing on varsity and everything, and then being you know, in the same position with him, working every day in practice, you, you knew there was something special about him. And our senior year, even our junior year, we had every coach from every Big Ten school come in, you know, sending scouts and everything, saying, you know, come play for us. So you, you knew people noticed he was, he was, like I said, larger than life and, and was for real and had a bright future ahead of him. Now, Mike, you were the voice of Wayne Hills football. Out of all the games Greg played in, can you give me one, a moment, a play that really sticks out in your mind? Well, I think the play that everyone's been talking about over this past week was against Passaic Valley, that, that final touchdown to send Wayne Hills uh, on to the semifinals and, and the state playoffs. And Dan and I were talking about this before we, we started filming, and that was a game that Wayne Hills was heavily favored. They were undefeated going into that, that game. Uh, Passaic Valley was a heavy underdog, and, and Hills didn't play that well. Uh, so just to get it to overtime, and then Greg sort of bails him out in the overtime. He's triple covered. He catches the touchdown. They advance on and, of course, go on to win the state championship. That's a, that's a game I'll always remember. Now, Dan, you being teammates with Greg, you had a uh, pretty close relationship with him. What was he like as not just a football player, but a person in general? He was a, a, a genuine leader. He was always the, the one out there early, working hard, motivating other people. He would you know, put in the extra effort. He would talk to everyone. He knew, was friends with everyone on the team. You know, everyone knew who he was, and he knew everyone's name. It wasn't just, yeah, I'm the star, leave me alone type thing. He was you know, the heart of the team. He, him and I were captains together, and just you know, standing next to him, you, you felt better as a, as a patriot and as a player, knowing that you were standing there with someone like him, you know, someone of that caliber. Now, I want to get to your guys' takes both. Uh, what was it like when, um, you know, Greg was in school here coming out? What was the buzz like at Wayne Hills? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, Greg was always a, a, a pretty well-hyped player. Um, I remember, I think, when we were seniors and they have the rankings on now Yahoo, mm -hmm. I think he was the third best player in the country behind Chris Leak and Reggie Bush, two guys who obviously most of you know. Chris Leak won a national championship or two with, with Florida and Reggie Bush still in the NFL. Uh, so we all knew who Greg was. Obviously, you know, like Dan said, we were all sort of friendly together. 
Um, I think the one thing that always stood, about, stood out about Greg is even senior year, I had some classes with him. He always went to class on time. He always did his homework. He never was a nuisance with the teachers or, or mm-hmm. the kids. He, he always, he's always working hard, and I think that's what's part of what's made him so successful in the NFL. I completely agree. He was always respectful to, to teachers, to parents, you know, everyone who would stop and say, hey, like, you know, who, who did you talk to today? Was it Florida State? Was it Miami, Notre Dame, whatever it may be? And he always took time and, and answered like that. But like Mike said, he was just one of the guys. You know, he would hang out with us and eat lunch and tell jokes and everything like that. And at the same time, he'd be in there watching film on his lunch break with his dad and everything. Now, you guys ha- were lucky enough to be part of the first state championship here at Wayne Hills. What was that like, you know, saying that you went to school, but you played on the team and you were announced it, that you were a part of a state championship winner here at Wayne Hills? It was, it was our ultimate goal. I mean, it's, it's the ultimate goal for every single team. But we had lost seven years in a row in the state championship. And our junior year, I remember sitting down in the locker room after and everyone was taking their pads off. And we all agreed that that wasn't going to happen to us. That was our ultimate motivation, to be the first undefeated 12-0 and state championship team. And from day one of you know, uh, the three days we had in August, mm-hmm. that was our ultimate goal. And we always worked towards that. And you know, Greg led the way for it. And that, that team was so well balanced. I think uh, what made that team so special was the seniors, almost every senior played. They mm-hmm. all had big moments throughout the course of the season. Obviously, Greg had a lot of big moments. But Greg was really more known for being a defensive end back then. I don't know how, how many sacks he had. I think 15, 15. sacks his yeah. senior season. Uh, he was just a beast on the D-line, and Dan was on the D-line with him. And the team was just so well-balanced. I mean, they didn't throw the ball a lot. So when they threw the ball, they had Dallas Lynch on the outside and Greg up the middle. Um, and, but it was just, you know, they ran the ball. They threw it every once in a while. The defense was outstanding. And it was just a lot of fun to watch. Now, this is going to be maybe not just a Wayne Hillis question, but a question just in general about Wayne. How important and special do you think it is to have an athlete from Wayne make it to the grand stage like the Super Bowl? Well, I think you can see it with all the hype that's going on. Uh, you know, major news networks are doing pieces on Greg Olson from Wayne, New Jersey. A lot of people are taking pride on it. It's, it's you know, something that you notice and acknowledge and say, hey, look, I used to hang out with that guy. Or you have these small st- uh, store owners that are saying he used to come in here and get a bagel and everything. Yeah. So it's it's a sen- huge sense of pride for everyone in the town and even I think from New Jersey as well. Like, hey, I know this kid. I heard about him when he was in high school. Now he's playing for you know the Lombardi Trophy. It's it's just really something great. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun watching on Sunday. Uh, I know he came close. Was it four years ago? Four years the ago. Bears. Mm-hmm. Four or five years ago, the Bears were in the NFC Championship game and. Uh, we were all rooting for them to make it. Unfortunately, he didn't do it then. He was able to, to get past uh, the Vikings, or not the Vikings, the uh, Cardinals a couple weeks ago. So it'll be a lot of fun to watch. I know I'll be having my, uh, my Greg Olson t-shirt on. I'll be rooting him on. Hope the Panthers yeah. win the Super Bowl, and uh, we can say we knew him back then. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a tough question, but while Greg's in the locker room come this Sunday, if you could tell him one thing before he takes the field, what would it be? Treat it like any other game. Um, Every single game, he had the, the intensity and the focus for, for whatever challenge was coming. No matter who the opponent is, he always stepped up to that. So I, I would tell him, I know it's difficult to, to even comprehend, <laughs> just treat it like another game. Go out there. You know, you're there for a reason. Show everyone why. It's tough for me to say because I didn't play. So yeah. my, my commentary to Greg might not be the best. But I guess if I was in that situation... My personal thinking would be you got to go as hard as you can every single play because you never know if you're going to get back there. Exactly. I mean, guys that, like we said before, Barry Sanders, Dan Reno, there's so many NFL Hall of Famers that never even made it to this game. So you got to take advantage of this one opportunity. And I think for the Panthers, the chance to go 18-1 and one and be considered one of the greatest teams of all time, that's a lot to, to live up to. I mean, that's a, that's a legacy that, that teams will be talking about 30 years from now if they're able to go on and win the Super Bowl this weekend. I, I definitely think that if, if they go out there and play the game that they've played all season to get mm-hmm. them to that 18-1, mm-hmm. and one, if, you know, Greg's really found his groove with Cam Newton and everything, they can go on to, poss- like, if they win, they could possibly repeat and possibly, you know, become one of those teams that are recognized as one of the greatest Super Bowl champions ever. Yeah. And I have to say, it's fun. On, on ESPN today, they, they post an article how Greg's the X Factor for the mm-hmm. Super Bowl. And it's just, it's, it's, I don't know, Dan, I don't know. It's a lot of fun, yeah. at least on my side, just reading all this stuff about Greg and how, just how important he is to the game. He's not like the long snapper or a backup, mm-hmm. yeah. backup tackle. I mean, he is a, a huge factor going to this game. And his impact could really make the difference on whether or not the Panthers win or lose. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming on set. We really appreciate it. Thank you. When Thank we you, come Andrew. back, we will be hearing from some of Greg's former teachers here at Wayne Hills and what they have to say about the Super Bowl-bound tight end. 
This broadcast is brought to you in part by Right Way Driving School. If you want your child to learn to drive the correct way, then there is only one way, the right way. Right Way Driving School, where safety is always our number one concern. Greg, from Wayne Hills Athletic and myself, congratulations on making the Super Bowl. That is just a fantastic feat. I remember when you were here at Wayne Hills High School, I had you as a freshman um, in health class, and then I had the honor of coaching you in track. Uh, it was an awesome county meet that day. Uh, you were down. And, uh, you know, you came over, Coach, what are we going to do? We got it together. We had a game plan. You ran a little faster, and you banged it out. You won the county championship in, uh, in Javelin, and uh, that's one of my greatest memories with you here. So, um, you know, you've had an awesome football career. I wish all the best of luck to you and your family, and congratulations. Greg Olson. Greg was in my CAD class uh, way back when. I don't even remember when it was. Um, and he enjoyed the class and he was a good student. Um, I was not a real big football fan. However, when he graduated, we did follow his career. And I remember him getting ready to be uh, chosen by the NFL. And I watched the NFL draft pick. <laughs> First time I ever did that. Probably the last time too. And my parents were watching it with me and we were so excited to see him. And my parents had heard all the stories of Greg Olson and the football team. and. And after that point, Greg had been, you, Greg, had been selected by the Bears, and my mom became a very big fan of yours, to the extent that sometimes I would forget the football game was on, and she would remind me, and she would call me and say, did you see the Olsen boy? Did you see the Olsen boy? And I would say, no, I forgot to watch, and she would tell me the score and how well you did, and she followed everything. She followed your start of your foundation. She followed the information about your family and your children and what your dad was doing and the other brothers and everybody else and your mom and was so excited about knowing somebody famous. My mom got sick this year and you guys won the championship and that afternoon she was we knew she wasn't going to survive this she had lung cancer and you won the game and one of the things I said to my mom was mom Greg's going to the Super Bowl and I know she heard me, and I know she's going to be watching the game from one of the best seats in the house. So good luck, and we'll always remember you. And I'm privileged to say that I knew you when. Thanks, Greg. Good luck. Um, Greg, I don't know if you remember me, but um, I was your sophomore teacher that came in halfway through the year. And, uh, and my name was Miss Clark. My, a great memory that I have of you is when I guess a week after I started um, here at Wayne Hills in, in February, you came up to me at the beginning of the class and you said to me, Ms. Clark, are, are, are you going to stay with us? Do you, like, do you like it here or do you think you, you know, you'll go back to your other high school? And I was really touched by that because you were so sincere when you reached out and you made me feel really welcome here at Wayne Hills. Good luck, Greg, in the Super Bowl. We're always thinking about you. Hey Greg, Price here. Thanks for all the exciting NFL memories you're giving us. We're having a ball up here and in Pennsylvania following your career. Uh, you bring such a poise, intelligence, dedication to everything you do and we appreciate it. Sans, of course, your biggest fan, literally and figuratively I say that. And he thanks you for the jerseys and Margaret keeping us connected and we're just super excited for Sunday and we hope you win. Do it. Oh, I have so many memories of, of Greg when he was a student here. Certainly uh, beyond the academic exploits, uh, Greg was an outstanding student. And I think I also remember very clearly that I would always have to make sure that Greg sat down in my office because otherwise I'd always be looking up at him. I think the character, um, beyond his academic um, experience and his success and on the athletic field, is that Greg was a man of character. And I always remember saying to him, Greg, that no matter what happens in your future, you have the possibility of being a role model for others. And I couldn't be prouder of having had the opportunity of working with Greg and seeing that the success that he has enjoyed both in Chicago and in Carolina um, and that he's on the brink of having an opportunity to achieve really the pinnacle of what he aspires to as a member of the Carolina Panthers. I will say, Greg, that uh, if you remember that one special day when you came in to visit me 
and I had my little son Jonathan, who was so young at the time, and you held him up, and he had his little Chicago bear, uh, bear with him, and. Jonathan, whenever he comes to my office, he loves seeing this. And as a matter of fact, he's now in the third grade, Greg, and he's going to be bringing this photo in and showing his fellow classmates. So, Greg, I wish you absolutely the best experience uh, as you um, get ready for the Super Bowl and um, that you enjoy the experience. But remember that no matter what, Greg, it is your character. It's your example for your teammates, it's example for your community, and it's example for young people who can look at you and see that hard work, dedication, honesty, respect for others is really of paramount importance to you in your life. So, Greg, congratulations. It was certainly an honor and a privilege to work with you. I guess I have a lot of memories of, of watching Greg play uh, on the field. He'd been in a band for so many years when I was when I was watching him play. Obviously a dominant player, both on offense and defense. It was fun to watch the intensity that he played with. I think even more impressively, though, with Greg was off the field, uh, was a nice you know student, nice guy to talk to, was always very respectful at times. He was very good friends with some of the people in the band, so he'd stop by and we'd talk about things. We were also both big college football fans, so we'd talk about that. I think the most impressive thing about him, though, the thing that I remember the most is you never heard him talk about how good he was. I mean, a lot of other people would say it, which was fine, but what he seemed to go out and do was go out to prove it. Every game he went out to prove that, that he was a dominant player and let everybody else do the talking. I think that's what I remember about him the most. Greg Olson you're talking about. Ah, hey Greg, remember me? I remember you. I used to call you tall boy. So have you grown any in the last 13 years or so? I think I had hair then. But hey, congratulations on all you've done and accomplished in these last years. Been kind of following you through, through the season, so to speak. Um, when you're out in that field and those neurons are working, or did we call them old rons? Or when those neurotransmitters are coming out of those axons, or was it ax-offs? I know you remember that, because you used to laugh. But best of luck, I'm voting for you. No, we don't vote, right? We don't vote for the Super Bowl. I'm rooting for you. But if I was voting, I'd vote for you. Good wishes, and maybe I'll win the pool. Ah, Greg Olson. What can you say about Greg Olson? I was his science teacher. In fact, two of his classes, um, he was in two of my classes, chemistry and I believe um, earth science. But anyway, he was one of the most kindest students that I'll ever have. Yeah, of course he was intelligent, absolutely. One of the brightest students also, but one of the finest young men I'll ever know. And I was proud to have him as a student. And uh, all that he's done for himself and his skills are just wonderful. I, I uh, kind of predicted that. I didn't predict the Bears. I thought he would go for the Giants. But I am, uh, I am happy he's where he is. And uh, I'm sure uh, deserving of any awards beyond football, what the NFL can give him. Thank you very much. Hi, Greg. This is Mr. Reinhardt, your old science teacher. I just want to say uh, congratulations on the Super Bowl. And I just remember you being in class, being very helpful to all the students and friendly to all of us in science, stopping by the science office to chat, uh, see how everyone is. And um, having you in class was a real pleasure. Um, I've known you, your brother, uh, the family for a long time. And uh, I really regard you as one of the best students we've had in, in the Wayne Hills as far as uh, just generally a nice person, hardworking, caring and um, great at what you do. Uh, appreciate your Super Bowl uh, activities and uh, looking forward to hearing of your success. I wasn't here when uh, uh, Greg was here. I came a couple of years afterwards, uh, but uh, knowing Greg through uh, him coming back and visiting the team and his father, um, I got to know him pretty well. Um, he's one of the greatest kids you ever want to meet. Kids, I call him kid, but uh, uh, he's one of the greatest young men you ever want to uh, meet. Uh, he's a family-oriented man. Um, and uh, other than just playing, uh, being such a good football player, he's that good of a person. Uh, that's the person I know. Um, and uh, if there's anybody that deserves um, this, is uh, Greg. Uh, Greg's a great uh, person. Um, great family man and a very good football player and uh, I wish him the best 
Good luck Sunday, um, and uh, you deserve it. Well, I've been around Wayne Hills since a uh, long time now, 1994, and uh, going to high school here, being class in 98. Greg and Chris were the water boys on the football team, so I remember going back to when Greg was a little guy running up and down the sidelines, you know, when we were on Friday nights, and you know, then coming back after college and seeing Greg here. I was I was a substitute in Greg's senior year, and uh, you know, it was really cool to to see all the hype around, um, you know, being uh, the state player of the year and bringing home our first state championship. Uh, so, you know, and then over the years, uh, my friendship with Mr. Olson and the Olson family, and just getting to be a part of all the special events that that um, you know, the success you know that Greg has seen over the years, his draft day, you know, playing for the Bears. You know, I remember going out to Chicago to visit my friends, and I made sure I went over to the uh, pro shop at, at Soldier Field to get a Greg Olson T-shirt. Um, you know, it's really been an incredible thing to see somebody from, from our hometown make it and, and be this successful. Go Panthers, go Wayne Hills High School. Greg, you have been a wonderful student and a team player throughout your career at Wayne Hills High School. I'm so proud to know you. It, it has been my privilege having you as a student. You were great then. I loved having you as an SDA member. You were fun, funny. We had a great time in SDA. Remember that? Dancing in the senior dance? Uh, along, with that, along with that, it was great watching you on the field playing football. You were such a gentleman, but a bruiser out there playing. Um, I can remember one time when, it, I think it was a state game, and there you were out there playing your heart out. I know you were so proud. It was a great time. Um, uh, I remember it was me and Mrs. Um, Modica. We were out there just cheering away for you, you and your team, of course. It has been my privilege and my pleasure being a member and a teacher of Wayne Hills High School. You are great. I wish the team a lot of luck. They're going to do well because you're Greg, Greg Olson, and you have been wonderful. Best of luck to the Panthers. Go Panthers. Wow, Greg Olson. This is something else that he's in the, the, he's in the Super Bowl today. It's really unbelievable. Uh, I can certainly remember when Greg was here. It was pretty neat. You know, as a young teacher, it was pretty cool for me to meet some of the college coaches that came through. Tyrone Willingham from Notre Dame. Uh, I remember Barry Alvarez from Wisconsin. A lot of big names. I used to teach right across from Coach Olson's office. Uh, it was great having Greg in class. I had him in my legal studies class doing things like our mock trials. Greg really got into it. He really was excited about it. I actually remember us taking a trip to the county jail and bizarrely enough, all the inmates knew who he was because they used to get the Herald News down there. They were all pointing, hey, we know you, buddy. I remember Greg looking at me and me looking at Greg. We kind of shrugged and just kept going. Um, but he was a great student. You know, people used to say to me, hey, Shale, what's this guy like? And I'm like, I'm telling you, he's a great athlete, but he's a great kid. He was a down to earth kid. He didn't big time people when he was here. And then I certainly remember coaching track. You know, Greg was a great track athlete for us. It was pretty, it was pretty crazy seeing a thrower he finished second in the entire state in the shot put, who also ran the sprints. Most of the throwers, no offense, big guys, not really runners. We'd stand at the end of the runway watching the 100 meters or the 200 meters, and it really, it looked like a father running next to a bunch of his kids. You know, somebody 6'5", and all these short guys coming down. But was, what was really impressive was, we'd end a long track practice, hot day, May or June, we'd all be walking back up to school, and there'd be Greg breaking out his playbook, that he got from his college to then go through that workout. So remember we used to say, you know, people would say, oh, he, he's a big kid. I said, yeah, there's lots of big kids, but it's that mix of big talented kid and that work ethic that we saw that gave us an inkling that maybe he'd be where he is today. I mean, you never know, uh, you never really expect something to happen this big, but it's really pretty neat, you know. Um, I always say he's my most famous alumni and as a teacher, when I look at the stuff Greg's doing today, I'm, I'm more impressed with his humanitarian efforts and the stuff he's doing for charities than even the stuff he's doing on the field. But it's certainly really cool as teachers. Uh, we're certainly all pulling for him here. We really hope the best for him. And we're excited for this Sunday for the Super Bowl. And I'll be honest, I'm really excited to see what he does after football because it seems like his playing career may just be an early chapter. And he's got, you know, Greg's obviously got a great future after that. So best of luck. We're pulling for you. It's super exciting. Can't wait to see what happens on Sunday. This broadcast is brought to you in part by 
Positano Pizza, the finest Italian cuisine and pizzeria. Show us your Wayne Hill student ID to get two slices of pizza or a bowl of pasta plus a drink for only $5. Well, that's all the time we have today. I want to thank Coach Demikoff, Mike Rudner, Dan Shaliri, and all the teachers who participated in making this video happen. Before we go, here are some highlights of Greg at Wayne Hills. So they're running the option play. The pitch goes outside, and he's brought down by for a huge loss by Greg Olson. Greg Olson, what an impact he's had on the defense today. It's, I think his third tackle in the backfield at least today. Out here, to Bill Monin, Rick Pintel, or Greg Olson. Monahan is back to throw. He he's going to throw it to Greg Olson, and he's got him at the 10, the 5, and he's down at about the 2-yard line. Tremendous throw by Brendan Monahan. What a throw by Brendan Monahan. High formation for Wayne Hills. And they're going to reverse to Greg Olson. He's got a lot of room on the outside. Picks up a huge block from Morris Bohorski. And he's off to the races. He gets taken out of bounds by Salamondo at the 20-yard line. It'll be first down Wayne Hills. In a single back formation right now. Monahan fakes the hand off to Torin Williams looking downfield. And he's got Greg Olson open in the outside. He's going to plunge forward for the touchdown, running over Salamondo for the score. Monahan's gonna drop back and pass. Bucci running up the middle of the field, but he's gonna get Greg Olson coming out of the backfield. And Olson gets a block by number eight, Dallas Lynch, who springs him open for the score. Touchdown, Patriots. Outside, Monahan this time rolls out of the pocket after faking the handoff. And he's gonna go deep for Greg Olson, who's wide open in the end zone, catches it for the score. Monahan to Olson for the third time in today's game. Touchdown, Patriots. In motion, Walker with the handoff, looking to get outside, not this time. Olsen tracks him down from behind. Greg Olsen, the Olsen coming into the game with six Olsen. tackles. He is a defensive force from that defensive end position. Yeah, we mentioned they're not going to run his way often, and this is a perfect example why. The whole package is Greg Olsen, big, strong, and fast. And watch the long arm of the law, number four in your program for Wayne Hills. Watch him go at it. Just gets his containment, sprints to the outside. See ya. Dan George, who has it stripped away by Olsen. Big defensive play. by Olsen. Torin Williams will try to get him a touchdown. So Monahan with a play action pass. He's rolling out the outside. He's going to throw it to Greg. Did he catch it? I'm not sure. Previous games has lost his footing. And they're going to throw it to Greg Olson, and Olson's got some running room. He gets dragged down by John Tringali at the 34 yard line. It'll be a first down for Wayne Hills. Open it up to a 30 0 lead with 22 seconds left to go in the first half. Like we said, the miserable e evening here at Wayne Hills High School. As Tringali's back to pass, and Greg Olson knocks him back to the second grade. He did not see Greg Olson. That's a difficult thing to do, missing a 6'6 guy like Greg Olson. But he did not see him, but he sure did feel him. Greg has the slot receiver on the far side. And Monahan back to pass. Greg coming across the middle. They got a screen play to Greg and Greg for the great catch. And he's got them running from the outside. Greg going to take it in for the score. Touchdown, Patriots. Split rider receivers, Bucci in motion, they like to use this handoff off to Bucci on the first play of the game. This time they're going to fake the Bucci and go deep to Greg Olson. Olson single coverage, he just grabs it over the shorter receiver and down he goes. The uh, exception here, Monahan's going to stay back in the pocket, he's got Greg wide open, throws it over the defensive back, touchdown Patriots. No comment, eye formation for Wayne Hills, Monahan's going to stay in the pocket. Monahan, nice job looting the defenders, going for Greg in the end zone. And Olsen makes the catch. Touchdown, Patriots. And, and all likelihood, the game is over. Touchdown, Patriots. Monahan to Olsen for the second time tonight. Scott's going to call touchdown to Corrado. And there's the rollout, like I said. And he's looking for Greg. How do you like that? Touchdown, he knows. Greg Olsen to the back of the end zone. High formation for the Patriots right now. And the fans are on their feet. Monahan, look at that, he's back in the pocket, and he's going for Greg Olsen. Oh!